a lot of the policies of President Biden are simply, seem to me, simply to be about doing the opposite of what President Trump did. And one of those uh, in, uh, very much affects your state, and that is just doing the opposite of what President Trump did down on, on the border. And uh, in April, I think we heard the figures just yesterday, 178,000 people attempted to enter the uh, United States illegally across the southern border uh, and were apprehended. All but about 5,000 of them are, are still in the country and are here. We've gone from record to record to record. Could you talk a little bit about the policy or the lack of policy uh, on the southern border and uh, you know where we go from here because the numbers just keep going up it's infuriating and um our citizens are feeling helpless about it because the democrats in charge they, they have simply refuse to address this problem and it's not as if there's not ways to address it it's the, the, it's, it's a pretty simple set of solutions to be honest and I, i've talked about this for months now um, you, you simply need to reinstate Trump's policies, especially the ones that involve cooperation with Mexico and the Northern Triangle countries. These, these policies were working quite well. Um, you need to enforce our, our, our current COVID mandates, um, which allowed us extra, extra powers to send people back immediately. Um, you, you have to, you have to um, from a legislative standpoint, we need to address the Flores settlement, which, which I'll try to put this simply, basically says you can't hold migrants and family units um, for more than 21 days, which also makes it impossible to adjudicate their claims, which means they have to be let loose into the interior. And until we change that, we can't enforce it. We can't enforce it in a timely manner. And why is this a more, why is this bad? It's bad for a couple of reasons. One, Americans deserve some sense of national sovereignty. That, that is it. That is a moral imperative. The second moral, moral imperative is that legal immigrants deserve to not be cut in front of by a bunch of illegal immigrants. That's also a moral imperative. This is wrong on so many levels. It also um, exacerbates human trafficking. And look, Americans have to care. That's the real thing. We have to keep talking about it because Americans need to actually care. Because the Biden administration won't feel any pressure on it whatsoever until Americans actually care. And, it, and, it, and the problem is, most, the vast majority of Americans do not see that. If they're not turning on the TV and seeing the crisis at the border, they honestly don't see it. You know, so it's, it's, it's very easy to ignore this problem for the Democrats because, you know, once a hundred thousands of people, they, they, they diffuse into our, in, into our system and, you know, the numbers keep growing and growing and growing and growing and it becomes a completely unsustainable prospect, but your average American is somewhat sheltered from it. And, um, but not, well, of course, not in the low-income neighborhoods. They're not sheltered government because that, that's generally where um, now they're competing for jobs with illegal immigrants. Uh, their schools are becoming overcrowded, and the, our taxpayer money is funding that. Right. So, you know, slowly but surely they do see it, but then it's too late. Why, why does the Biden administration apparently want to encourage it? Because when, when the influx really started to surge, the, the word from the Biden administration was not don't come, but just don't come yet. Why do they want to, what, what, is their, what is their goal in allowing or even encouraging illegal immigration? This is one of the saddest turns of the party. Okay, the Democrat Party of Bill Clinton no longer exists. But I think there used to be a legitimate labor party in our country. Uh, and that used to be Democrats. That, that no longer is true. This is a very radical Marxist party now. And, and, and part of their revolutionary stance is to remake the electorate. Um, it ultimately, power is their actual goal. And what they do with that power, you know, they'll let us know when we get there, but it'll be utopian, of course. But as part of getting that power is votes, of course. We still do live in a democracy. And so it's, it's, you have to look at their entire strategy. Unfettered illegal immigration, uh, coupled with something like the DREAM Act. Now, if you look at the DREAM Act, it basically says blanket amnesty because it totally redefines what a dreamer is. It says, yeah, your age doesn't matter. When you came over, it doesn't really matter. You're all dreamers now. Okay, well, that's tens of millions of people. And they want to they want to grab hold of that electorate as soon as possible. They start toying, you know, they've already started to normalize this idea of non-citizens voting. I mean, they do that in local elections in places like San Francisco. So you see all of this coming together. Um, what they want to do, create an electorate to gain more power. I, a cynic, I, this is such a cynical interpretation, but I honestly don't know how else to interpret it because they, they won't tell us, they won't give us another explanation. Right. 
Um, so uh, where yeah. are we left? It's difficult to see in any other way. Uh, Congressman, I know that we've uh, run out of time. I want to thank you for the time and to wish you a speedy recovery and to see you back on Capitol Hill when not just you, but the whole of the country returns to normal.